And we're going to practice for about 15 minutes, as we often do, just beginning with settling into your body. Just taking these first couple of moments to make sure that you have the right amount of comfort. It's something as small as making an adjustment on your foot or grabbing a pillow. Right? Just a reminder, these little tiny things are ways that we offer support to ourselves. And very often we, we forget that we're taking care of ourselves, that we're tending to ourselves, just by pouring ourselves a glass of water. So as we make these little choices, the invitation to remember and really lean into the way that you're caring for yourself. You're welcome to close your eyes or set your gaze downward at any point. Starting to tap in to notice your inner experience. What's happening outside of us will influence us. It's different sounds happening. This just little arriving, just slowing down and noticing. Sometimes it's helpful to name certain things that might be causing distraction. Like I'm in a noisy place. Or perhaps I had a difficult conversation yesterday and I know that my attention wants to go back in time. Just naming those things can be helpful. Just to name like, oh yeah, that's what's happening right now. That's okay. And eventually we just start to settle and notice the subtler things like the movement of your breath. And then subtler, that still space between breaths. Just curious. Curious about what you're feeling this morning. As often as needed, just coming back to your breath, just allowing the rhythmic sway of your breath to be soothing. And sometimes even just remembering that our nervous system appreciates rhythm and helps us tap in to the gift of our breath. There's so many beautiful parts to our breath, first and foremost, that it's giving us life at every single moment. And also just in its nature, there's a rhythm and there's a soothingness to that rhythm. We're not trying to push away any difficulty by just letting that soothingness kind of take over our attention, but we're allowing it to be a part of our attention. Okay. And eventually that rhythmic movement may give us some resourcing. It gives us something to focus on so that we can unhook from certain thoughts that are a little bit sticky. Just noticing awareness, observation, strengthening our ability to be and see, rather than always feeling like we have to be a part of, we have to take on every thought that comes. I even imagine just the amount of communication that happens every day. How many emails do you get? How many texts? How many ways are you required to engage? Sometimes enjoyable, sometimes less so. And then how much communication is happening inside your own brain? And it can be so much. It can be overwhelming at times. So we have this opportunity to slow down, 
And we don't have to respond in words or emails or texts. We can just be. And we can just listen. And we can just receive. What does that feel like just to allow yourself to receive this breath? You don't have to work hard for it. Just let your body breathe for you. This consideration of communication is so important in our meditation practice because we're always communicating with ourselves. It's one of the few things that we can control, and not in a power over dominant way, but in the way of really noticing how is my communication affecting myself, others, my experience. When we notice the way that we're speaking to ourselves, we start to tap into that very first yama of ahimsa and non-farming. Anytime I'm telling myself, I always this, I never this. I'm thinking about somebody else, they always this, they never this. That's just one example of how the mind will tell us a little untruth. It's that second yama of non-lying or benevolent truthfulness. It can feel a little bit strange sometimes to think about this concept of lying. Very few of us are going out in the world and consciously telling lies. But it's those little untruths that really cause us harm. It's a lot of thoughts that we think that we believe that are just no longer helpful for us to put our belief in. I'm talking at that very subtle level. Something like that example of I always, I never. It's very rare that that's the full truth of something. It's slowing down, we can really start to notice and observe. Well, there's a thought that's maybe a half truth. Can I just unhook for a moment and come back to my breath? So in this way, working with non-harming and non-lying, working with compassion and benevolent truthfulness with myself. The one truth that always exists is that as long as you're alive, your breath is here for you. Your breath is innately good. And there's a deep truth in that. It might seem so simple, but it's deeply profound. Just sitting with that, just allowing your body to breathe for you, receiving this gift of breath.
Just being with your breath. And working with our mind. Just noticing when our mind has wandered. Just inviting it back. Your breath is right here. Just inviting your attention. Just paying your own attention to yourself. This precious commodity of attention. Seeking this concept of communication and information. And that leads us right into the third, fourth, and fifth yam. This asteya or non-stealing is the third yam. And again, very few of us are walking around stealing items in life. But on a subtler level, I very often will steal my own very precious time by getting caught in a worry loop of something that never comes to fruition. And yet I'm stuck in my mind about it. And then I'm going to go right back up to that first yama of non-harming because I don't want to beat myself up for getting stuck in that worry loop. Just noticing it, giving it my kind attention, asking myself, where is that fear coming from? Where is that anxiety coming from? Is there some tension in my body that I can relieve right here in the present? It might not fix the problem that's in my mind, but it allows me resourcing to continue to tend to myself. And this idea of non-stealing or working with abundance leads us right into the fourth yama, non-excessiveness. It's very often I'm using an excess of my energy. I'm excessively or sometimes even obsessively stuck in a mental loop. And this wise use of energy requires me at times to just pause. I've been stuck on social media for a little bit too long. I've been stuck in rumination. I've been beating myself up in my mind for a little bit too long. And that's less than a wise use of my energy. Rather than getting mad at myself, I can appreciate that's the fact that I noticed it. These yamas, they just lead one into the other. It's always going back to that concept of the first yama of non-harming, giving myself my own compassion. But through that, strengthening my compassion, building resiliency so I can stay with my own difficulty just as much as I can stay with my own joy. And in that way, my capacity for Anything that comes expands. It's just breath by breath. I invite you to bring your hands into any of your closing habits or practices. Amen. We'll end as we often do with loving kindness phrases. You can repeat them back if they make sense for you. Today, may I remember the innate goodness of my breath. May I notice how I'm communicating with myself. the best of my ability. May I choose wise communication with others. And when action is needed, may I choose to move with ease and peace. Take your time whenever you feel complete. Open your eyes, finding movements. As always, take a moment to thank yourself. Thank you, Sandra, for being here to support each other.